consciousness is the domain of immediate experience. How are we going to save this planet? How are we going to take the lethal cascade of toxic, technological, and ignorance-producing habits that are loose on this planet and channel them toward some kind of a sane and livable world? Well, the answer is emerging in culture out of the collectivity of global consciousness. It is what I call the archaic revival. It is this very large turnover in the mass mind. Some people call it a paradigm shift. It's an effort to recover the sensory ratios, the feelings, and the attitudes of 15 to 20,000 years ago, before fear, before ego, before male dominance, before hierarchy, hoarding, warfare, propaganda, child abuse, all of these things. Uh, and the answer lies, as was indicated last night, in integration into the dynamics of nature. Well, so far as I, my analysis gives it to me, uh, the only way you can abandon yourself to the dynamics of nature is to break through the language shell. You must cut through the um, aura of programming and cultural assumptions that surround us from the moment we are able to speak. The only way this can be done is by dissolving the boundaries of ego. Ego is a structure that is erected by a neurotic individual who is a member of a neurotic culture against the facts of the matter. And culture, which we put on like an overcoat, culture is the collectivized consensus about what sort of neurotic behaviors are acceptable. <laughs> now, I don't know... So, you see, what I see going on in the Amazon is a very radical psycholytic therapy where they are dissolving, literally dissolving, the boundaries of self, culture and uh, and ego assumption and then what you discover is not the white light or what William James called a blooming buzzing confusion although in the first few minutes it can be like that but what you really discover is sentient organized living loving nature that nature is a force Nature is a mind, a personality, organized with intentionality, organized with uh, feeling, humor, grace, and uh, conviction. Conviction. And if you can get right with that conviction, then that's the secret of dancing in the waterfall. That's the secret of the shaman's apparent transcendence of the rules of mundane statistics. Because that is what it is. The shaman doesn't violate physics. He just, he or she simply knows how to push the improbable to its greatest extent. And uh, in, in Eastern philosophy, this is called the Tao. You know, abandonment to the flow. Uh, fitting of the small pattern into the larger pattern. Well, I think these things are very important because I think uh, that psychology, psychiatry, psychoanalysis, it's a good idea, but it will never reach any kind of operational effectiveness until we look to these native healers all over the world and study their methods, and their methods are uh, chemical and personal. It's a combination of care, attention, intention, and chemistry that allows consciousness to be made malleable and then recast uh, in other forms. So, uh, 
I find myself this weekend explaining myself. That's what I feel like I'm doing. Why does someone who extols the self-transforming elf machines of the DMT space also claim to be a conservationist, also, you know, have a mathematical dog and poodle show? Well, it's because all of these things emerge out of the concrescence of consciousness, its intention toward its own transformation. Nature is the answer. Not, it's not enough to be like Wordsworth. It's not enough to, uh, this is not, you know, Mao Zedong said the revolution is not a dinner party. And certainly the ecological revolution is not a dinner party. Poetic sensitivity to the death of the planet is not what we're striving for here. What we're striving for is to halt, overturn, and back out of the impending death of the planet. It is very clear now that consciousness will decide that the planet, there are not rosy futures of uh, suburban housing and ratatouille to be extended endlessly into the future. We are approaching a bifurcation where it is either going to become heaven or hell, one or the other. And I think that this archaic intuition, which I see reaching clear back to the uh, birth of the 20th century and the 19th century, back to people like Alfred Jarry and uh, Guillaume Apollinaire and the pataphysicians, the surrealists, the physicists around Einstein, Freud, modern art, modern dance, jazz, uh, all of this stuff uh, is an effort to reclaim the primitive to reclaim the archaic, to reject all that powdered wig algebra that comes down through the French-English-German tradition of constipated male dominance. <laughs> and instead, you know, uh, intuit, that's what it is in Freud and Jung and, and the New Age, and intuit our way out. But now, we're clo it, the intuition is rising to the surface. We no longer have to uh, operate without uh, the presence of the goal firmly in hand. The goal can now be stated. What this is all about is a return to archaism with the lessons learned in history. That's where we were happy. The fall was a fall into a veil of tears, into a world of uh, limitation and pain and suffering and infectious disease and so forth and so on. It's a prodigal journey into a lower dimension that can now be ended by a collective cultural decision to commit to this Taoist, shamanistic, feminized, cybernetic, caring, aware, present, kind of being. I mean, it's nothing more than what each of us is in our very best moments. But we have to extend those very best moments to fill whole lifetimes. Uh, you know, think of the number of people who suffered and died that we could sit under this tree this morning. I mean, in the last million years, nine times the glaciers have ground south from the poles, freezing the world into ice and confining human populations to subtropical valleys and the warm tropics. Nine times the interglacial periods have come and human populations have spread out over the earth. They had, uh, they didn't have radio, they didn't have antibiotics, contraception, uh, statistical analysis, or the partial differential equation and yet somehow they manage to get us here are we then as the heirs of that wave front of the inheritors of a billion year process are we in one generation to turn it into a massive pottage I think not I certainly hope not I would like to believe that we could make that uh, leap to conscious awareness that would allow us to take hold. Now, the problem, it was easy the first ten years that I sat before you, because what we were doing was getting to know each other, 
to verify that we in fact existed, that I wasn't crazy, you weren't crazy, so forth and so on. Now what looms ahead is the mess of politics. And this I'm sure you have no stomach for. I certainly don't. I'd rather be stoned and uh, <laughs> rocked in the arms of the goddess. But as a matter of fact, this dominator thing is not going to be unhooked and put to bed without a struggle. Everyone is going to have to be counted. I've talked to you in recent months about memes. Memes being the smallest potential units of ideas. They're like genes. We are the nucleus of a mutant meme. The meme of plant consciousness, hallucinogenic consciousness, shamanistic consciousness. We have to refine this meme, replicate it through repetition, and spread it through society in the same way that a plant sheds seeds into an ecosystem. The idea will compete. The idea is a good one. It's adaptive, it's clever, it's tough, it's invasive, it can make use of many contexts to promote its own existence. But it can't do any of that if we don't replicate it and get it out. So uh, I see these kinds of meetings as an opportunity for building community, as an opportunity for people to look around themselves and connect with the other people who are here we cannot be told from the rest of the population unless we self-select and gather together at a single point in space and time. When we do that, we recognize each other. When this meeting is concluded, we will merge back into the larger stream of the body politic. But carrying this meme of the Gaian resurgence, the Gailanic wave that must come I mean, people say it's so wonderful that you articulate these feminist ideas and so forth. I do it because I don't want to be dead. I do it because I don't want my children to have no world to live in. There is no choice. It's, uh, it, the walls are high and the current is moving very fast. What we need to do is merely uh, keep our spirits high and learn to sing the song.